In this video, we're going to focus on how we can color the background colors with the Finner plugin. And you can see here, this is a vertical stack line chart where we color the background color here, here, and then we leave white space here and then color this one here at the very end. So let's start to explore how to do this. In this video, we're going to focus on coloring the background color with the filler plugin for the vertical line chart in ChartJS. And this is a real tricky item. However, it's very nice they have this. This is built in into ChartJS. So let's start to, to work on this. And first of all, we need to get our default code, which is ChartJS3.com getting started. Go on here and you can find the link as well in the description box. Scroll down and then just copy this entire chunk of code that you see here. Copy this, and if you want to understand what this code does, make sure you watch this video here. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste it all in there, and I'll we'll cut this out. And once I did that, I'm going to put this in here, save, and then refresh. All right, so now we have this, but I want a, a vertical line chart. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to convert a few things in here. First of all, I'm going to say here yeah, this is, sorry, my mouse is not responding correctly. So that's a line. Next, if I save this, that's the line, all right. Let's say the border width here. I'll just remove this because we have a nice thicker border. There we are. Next, what I want to do is I want to change the index axis. So I'm going to swap these axes here. And once we swap them, the line becomes vertical. So I'm going to say here, index axis, instead of x, you make this y. Say refresh, there we are. So now we have this. The next thing what I want to do is I want to have it stacked. So if we have multiple items, this will become very, very interesting. So what I'm going to do here is uh, x axis, and then I'm going to say here stacked equals true, comma, comma, and then here stacked equals true as well. Make sure you have a comma here. Save, refresh. So now we have this. It's stacked, but you don't see anything because we only have one data set. So let's duplicate the data set two more times. So we have a few. Uh, items to work with comma paste and comma paste all right so now we have this if i save this refresh we have three different lines here what i will do is i will make sure that these lines are all a single color so uh, we have here the blue one so i will make sure that this is blue that's the second value here i'm going to cut out this just put that in there and put it in here as well and then make sure that this is number one because i want here a solid color refresh here all right, oh, that's the yellow one, so I should not be doing that one, but that's all right. I'll, I'll make this one yellow instead. So cut out that one and put that in there. So we don't need an array here because I only want to assign a single color in here. So that's why I'm removing the array. And here, of course, 0 0.2. All right, final one is the last value in here. Although you can leave the array if desired, but it has no real value in this case. It's just excess code. So... Once we did this, save that, refresh. All right, now we have them yellow or red, yellow, and blue. However, the background colors are not matching. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say enter. We're going to say a fill. And if you would do fill true, what will happen is the very first item will color from starting point all the way to here, which is perfect. In our case, this is perfect. So what I want to do is I want to do true here for the yellow one as well and just see what happens then. Copy this. Put that in here, save, and refresh, and now what we have is an issue. It doesn't understand or distinguish this item here, which already have it have this part colored. So what has happened now is that this here becomes orange because it blends the yellow and the red together. And if you would do another one here, you will see that it's exactly the same issue all together, and then we have this purplish, darkish color. So we don't want this. What I want to do is I want to separate them. And I want this one to be red, yellow, and this one to be blue. All right, so how do we do this? Well, the first one we could do like this. We can give it a value of true, which is fine. Or we can say here, if I'm not mistaken, it's start. So if I save this, refresh. All right, start doesn't work. I need to do origin. Then in that case, origin, save, and refresh. So as you can see here, the origin, what really happens is it starts here from where it's what is the starting point? And recognize that this is the starting point. However, the others, let's remove them, will not work. So the one thing that is a quite tricky one is we're going to start. Start will somehow go always to the center. Although why, I don't know. I, there must be some 
explanation for that. Although I could, couldn't find anything in the ChartJS documentation, it doesn't indicate anything. So there's the logical side on that one I cannot explain. Anyway, we have this. But what about then the next one here? How will we do this? Because this here creates an error or undesirable result. I want to start from this point here. It should understand these points here all the way to the data set here. For this, all we can do here is just say fill and I would say here is zero. And what this truly does is, let's refresh. What it does is the following. It indicates that it will start from index zero, from wherever index zero left its mark, in this case, and then from there all the way to the uh, index one item. And that's what we have here. So this works beautifully. And then of course here, we do another one and we can say here, fail, and then we do here one. Do I save this? Refresh. Then we have this. Of course, you might say you want something else. Maybe you want to have a color and you want to highlight, for example, this 50 here. So what we could do as well is maybe for the last one to specify something else. So I'm going to change this. I'm going to put in here the curly braces. And then within here, I'm going to say value. And then I want to pinpoint a specific value. So let's say everything till 50. And that's it. So let's put in a 50, save, refresh. So what is happening now is it will draw everything within this line here, gives the space here, but we'll make this 50, it highlights this point here, which is quite nice as well. It gives a very unique effect as well. So then now let's do one final exercise here, which is how would we, for example, want to highlight the very end here? I want to keep this space here nicely white, but I want this one to hit the very end of it. You might say, well, we just have to put in here 60, which is correct, but there's a, well, there will be a problem. The moment we surpass a new value of 60, at that moment, we go have an issue. Well, you might, or you could just say here, we can just put in here the highest, but let's say 100, and we have problem solved. Basically, this would be fine, but if you want to be very accurate with looking at what is the current value, no matter what, and then if it expanded, that it should be fine. It will not uh, create any issue. We want to have this value here more dynamic. So what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to show you exactly how we can get this value. So what we're going to do here is basically the following. We're going to grab here the item, or I guess we could do it. We are in here, so I guess we can do a callback here. So what we're going to do here now is to try to get the dynamic value here. And for that, let's do our callback. So we can see here we have this value here. And we state now 100 or 60 or whatever we want to have. But I don't want that. I want a dynamic. But I don't want to figure out that on my own. So I want the computer to figure that out. So we're going to say here CTX. And then we make a callback. We create a, a function error expression. Curly braces. And then within here again, parentheses. Make sure they have the parentheses enclosed around it. So what happens now is if I do here console log, we're going to open up the object. Basically, this is just the object. If I refresh here, nothing happens here. Don't worry about that. But we get our values here. And this is the object of all this. However, I don't want this. Remember, if you've seen many of my other videos, I always talk about um, op, uh, what is it, the object uh, destructuring. And what we're going to do here now is basically the same. I want to go from CTX to chart. So what we can do here is the following. I say here ctx.chart because this consists of a lot of values. And I see my mouse is somehow not working accordingly. Anyway, so what happens now is what I did here is chart of ctx.chart, meaning I'm going now into the chart object, which is just one level higher. And you can find here all of the information. And the information we need right now is we're going to the scale and not the y scale, but the x scale because we have swapped the items with index axis, remember. So we go to into the scales here, and then I'm going to click here on the X. And then if you scroll down here or look or look carefully, you'll see here end is 60. And this is exactly what we need, or max is 60. One of those two, doesn't matter. They're both identical. So what I want to do here is I want to figure out how to get to this item here or this object. So you can see it from scale dot X dot end. So that's the value we're going to grab. So say here, chart that scale or scales with an S, if I'm not mistaken, let's double check. Scales with an S. 
dot x axis dot end. So the moment we do this, and then what we could do here is just say, I guess we can do this. We don't have to do console log. I don't want to have the console log. Say refresh. All right. So it doesn't work here yet because I didn't return. If I save this, return, there we are. So now we have this here. It will understand it. And look what we're going to do here. Because that was that is a very important point. We have here the highest value here, but our values here is based on a stacked value. So it just it's cumulative basically. It calculates them all together. Anyway, doesn't matter. Let's do this on 90 and see what happens. If I save this, refresh, there we are. So we get this huge, huge spike here. And then here you can see still it works accordingly. And that's basically the way how you can play around on vertical level with the filler plugin in the chart chairs. So if you enjoyed this video and maybe you want to learn also something else regarding to coloring, I have another one that's also quite interesting here where we are coloring basically a segment of a line and then afterwards the other part of the segment of the line will be a different color and it's just only one line here. So that's also a very interesting video to explore regarding to colors.